everybody welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome any new people as well as i'm bad at intros <laughs> first time here hi my name is missa and whilst i mainly focus on makeup tutorials or first impressions things like that i have been encouraged by my anti-haul video to just sit and chat a bit more as well so that's where today's video comes in as you can see by the title it is um palettes that i regret buying eyeshadow palettes that i regret buying I do have one that is not an eyeshadow palette and I'll save that till the end or maybe I won't even talk about it and then just stay on topic. <laughs> so before I begin, do please subscribe um, because that, please, and yeah, without any fanning around, why don't we just jump into palettes that I bought that I really wish I had not. This was inspired by the fact that I'm kind of rummaging around my collection trying to find makeup to put in my um makeup that i hate video which i'm finding really tough to do because i've kind of declared most of it but the things in front of me bar one i probably will declutter by like putting on depop potentially no promises or by just giving to my niece more likely also if my gross arm patch comes into view then it's just me testing my TENS machine allergy which is <laughs> clearly allergic to however for those following the story I put a hypoallergenic one on this part of my arm yesterday for 12 hours and it's over 24 hours later and look nothing so I think I'm not allergic to that which is great but anyway let's jump into it shut up Melissa <laughs> but you're all saying that I say that a lot Hamish says that a lot <laughs> So the first one needs no introduction. I don't think I've made a huge secret of the fact that I really don't like this palette. And this is from a brand that I love a lot of the palettes. And this one I regret buying. It is the Jeffree Star Alien palette. I have done a couple of tutorials. I did a first impressions and then another tutorial using it. I will link them in the description box. But basically I kind of felt peer pressure to buy this, not peer pressure, that's stupid. I got a lot of requests to buy this palette when it launched um, to do tutorials and things on my channel because the palette's quite unique to look at. Someone's viral, I'm just going off. You never know if you should be alarmed or if you should wait for them to turn it off. They've turned it off. Um, and also because the colour story is fairly unique. Um, do you not think that this shade should have been in the Jawbreaker palette? Because that is literally the colour of the packaging for like all of the stuff. So whilst I thought this palette performed pretty darn well, um, it was not my favourite palette of his that I've used. There is definitely one, two, three, three shades in here that I would depot and keep if I was a depotter and keeper kind of gal. I'm really not. I know for a fact that if I put three shades into a Z palette, I would never ever use them. So I really like the shade Abduction. I really like the shade Martian Soil. And then I really like this one, what's it called? Phone Home. These are the three shades in the palette that I really, really like. The rest of the palette can totally do without. I mean, I barely do like gold smoky eyes. So while the two gold tones are beautiful, never reached for them. The black was all right, wasn't blown away. The purple was all right. Barely looks like I've used that. I just don't go for this palette and I spent a lot of money in this palette. I think was this one of his 46 pound ones like um, Blue Blood and Blood Sugar, which by the way, those two adore Jeffrey for watching. Um, but yeah, this palette, I don't think my niece will use it. Would anyone actually want to buy this though? Like it's not looking its finest because I swatch things a lot. Do you know what I mean? I also don't like selling things because I get the fear that they'll just break in the post and then people won't get them in one piece and then that's, I wouldn't like that myself. So I could like put it on Facebook. If you live in Edinburgh, you could come pick it up and then we could chat crap about makeup for a few hours while we're here. 
So the next palette that we're going to talk about is one that wasn't too expensive, thankfully, not in the league of Jeffree Star, but I absolutely hated this palette and I will link my review to it down below again so you can see my first impressions. Um, this is from a brand that I generally like, that generally like their eyeshadow palettes, even though it is a cheap brand. And it is the Morphe 35G Bronze Gold. So this isn't like a hugely old release. Um, I thought this palette was pretty terrible. I have not reached for it since that video because honestly since that video I was like, no, the palette's absolutely pants, I don't want to use it. I did think the matte shades were all right. I thought they were quite nice, but the shimmers were just pretty lackluster. This one looks like I've used it 10, 20 times because it's got such like a big gouge out of it because I clearly had to dig into it so much to get actual pigment. But some of these are just so bland. Like, that doesn't look that bad from far away, but I mean, probably even up close. There's a few swatch. I mean, they don't look terrible, but I did try to get a lot of pigment on my finger and I still don't have a lot of pigment on my fingers. This is why in videos I've said Morphe is really hit and miss and I really do feel they are. The James Charles palette, although I don't watch James Charles or particularly gel with him, let's say. I love his palette. I also really enjoyed the um, Pride one. Let me kneel over and get it. What's it called? 25L. I really like this palette's quality. 35M Boss Mood, great palette. But this one was a huge waste of money for me, a huge waste of time even using and putting on my eyes. I mean, I don't know what drew me to it because I never wear bronze eyeshadow. And if you're new here, this is the kind of look like bright, colorful that I like. So that was a waste of time and a waste of money. And I wish I hadn't bought it, but at least it wasn't that expensive. Moving on to one that wasn't grossly expensive is this one. This is Carity and this is all the rosé. No, it's not, it's rosé all day. Um, palette. I was so excited when Carity launched on Beauty Bay because I've followed them in the US for a really long time, really like the brand from what I'd seen and when they launched on Beauty Bay I was super excited. I bought this the day it launched because I thought oh I could do such a gorgeous look with this eyeshadow palette. I could do like a really bright vibrant pink like cut crease with like a gold Cup, you know, I was like very excited. I will say I really like the liquid lipsticks and they're really cheap. I think they're like a fiver and they're so good. But this palette is pants. It is absolutely pants. I have not really met. That swatch looks phenomenal. My goodness. There is a few swatches of that palette. Gosh, that bright pink swatched beautifully. But I can tell you, I spent a good few hours trying. I filmed the whole process and then just deleted the footage once I realised nothing good was coming out of it. I tried for a long time packing these shadows on, I tried two different bases and nothing was happening. I think this is over £20. They were recently had it in the sale for like 17 and I was like trying to like telepathically warn people not to try it and buy it but I mean, do bear in mind with a pinch of salt all of my opinions because they're just my opinions on products and what works for you might not work for me, vice versa, do you know what I mean? And if you love these palettes that I'm saying I hate, it's just my opinion. What does it matter in the grand scheme of things? Um, so yeah, I thought this was a real letdown and because of that reason I've not bought any of the other palettes because I'm like, I don't want to waste my money and I just can't do it even though I really wanted to love this and I wanted to love the brand and I do like the liquid lipsticks, like I said. But yeah, I just thought it was very lackluster and pigment didn't blend nicely. And it was, it's just the pigment, you know me? I need pigment, I need bam, wham, bam, bam. And it, it didn't have that, <clears throat> excuse me. Moving on to one that's a bit more high end, but it was one of their cheaper palettes. Um, this is the Smashbox Covershot Ultra Violet Eye Palette. I like the packaging, I must admit. And when these first launched, I was, I wanted them so bad. I only own like two things by Smashbox and this being like one of them. I've got the foundation and a liquid lipstick as well. So I own three things. This palette really 
spoke my name. This like lilac shade, love. I love purples and pinks. I like blue. You could say this is blue. And I just thought this palette looked really nice. And actually I think I got it 15 or 20% off. And that's what made me take the plunge and buy it. Let me swatch a few shades. This is why I feel like swatches are so like, they're important, but they're also not the be all and end all. There is some of the shades from that palette swatch. And look how beautiful that color story is. Look at that, like, what is that color called that I'm trying to think of? I can't remember, but isn't that such a gorgeous color story? I mean, the blue is a bit kind of out of place, but look at it, it's gorgeous. However, this I tested this on another day that I was gonna sit down and do a full face first impressions. And quite often I will do one eye off camera just to get a feeling of what kind of look I wanna do. And then I'll come on camera and you know test out and do it on camera. And I sat there for such a long time fiddling and faffing. First of all, the pigment wasn't there. I didn't feel like it was going onto my eyes very well. And secondly, I felt like the color story, whilst I think it is gorgeous, it was really hard for me to come up with cohesive looks. And that's really important to me in a palette as well. Like I need to feel like I can come up with really cohesive looks, which is why I don't like this as well. I don't feel like I can get really great looks out of this palette. Um, the Rosé one I could, it just wasn't working. And the Morphe 35G I could, it just wasn't working. But this one I felt like I just really struggled. It was all very pastel and very, very dull because the only deep shade is this deep blue, which is shimmer. And the rest of them, I just feel like don't go with that blue. So I can use that blue to add depth. So I really regret buying this palette 110%, wish I hadn't. Oh, what can you do? Another palette. This one will be not divisive, but a lot of people really love this palette. And this is gonna give credence to that um, person that asked in my like, get ready with me, why don't you like Kaylee? I was like, I do, I don't have, what, what do you mean? I'm nothing against her, but I hate her palette. I'm really sorry. I know Kaylee is an incredible makeup artist. She is just incredible in every way. I think she's a really nice person as well. But this eyeshadow palette with Sosu, I cannot make a look out of this. I can. So I could put black and brown and purple in the crease, blend it out and then put this on my cut crease or this on my cut crease. But if that's the only kind of looks I were seeing, I was seeing being done with this palette and I wanted to try and do something different spent ages on it, couldn't do it. There's some really beautiful shades in here. Like this palette is actually, I would say very good quality. This is probably like up there in terms of quality with like ABH and stuff, which I was surprised because um, I didn't really like the Sosu face makeup that I've tried so far. Although I love Sosu lashes. There's some swatches. I mean, the colors are stunning. Look how vibrant that yellow is. I'll swatch a few more just because I feel like I need to show you. And I'm not like trying to make these swatches look good. I'm just trying to show you how good they do swatch. I think that palette, out of all of the palettes that I'm talking about today, is the one that I have tried the most with. I've sat down with that on so many different days and tried to do a look on one eye so that I could do the other one on camera. And I, every single time I was just failing miserably. And then that puts me in a bad mood for the rest of the day. And then that day is ruined because I need to be able to do more makeup. And I just couldn't. And I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm not inventive enough. Maybe I am not. I mean, I'm definitely not as talented as Kaylee MUA, but I just couldn't see anything from the palette that hadn't already been done and was like all over social media. And I like to try and do something different. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not a huge copier of makeup. I like to kind of, you know, make up my own looks and I just felt like I couldn't with this palette. And yeah, I could quite easily just get rid of this. To be honest, it wouldn't be missed from my collection because I've literally never been able to use it on camera. And yeah, I did. I just I feel a bit deflated about this palette because I wanted to like it so much. 
but unfortunately it's a no from me. I'd like to know out there if you've tried this and you can't make it work what your thoughts are so like why can't you because I do think the quality is very very good. The next one I'm going to talk about is kind of a blanket for all of this type of product and what I mean by that is limited edition and I bought this not realizing it was limited edition. The majority of the makeup I buy is for my channel is to either test on my channel or to just have so I can use on my channel repeatedly and enjoy and love. And I bought this at Christmas time, not realizing it was limited edition. Now I know I just saw it on Debenhams that they are going to be releasing this again in July. For some reason, I think it must be leftover stock, but, or like, yeah, just leftover unsold stock and they're gonna be restocking it on Debenhams. But the Gingerbread Spice Palette, whilst, I had a great time with this palette. I'm using this more as an example of all limited edition makeup that I've bought and I have got quite a collection now in my collection of makeup that's limited edition and I just feel like it's wasted. Like, unless you have it, you can't copy the look. It smells so good. <clears throat> and you can't go out and buy it if you're inspired by me using it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's I sound so big headed when I say that but I just mean like any limited edition makeup item in general from anyone you can't then go and buy it and recreate that look because it's out of stock I mean this palette I did think was really good quality it's definitely my favourite um, Too Faced palette that I own and I do have quite a few although I do really like the Tutti Frutti one as well which I think is also limited edition so this encompasses the Tutti Frutti as well I'm trying to swatch really awkwardly. Like, look at the pigment on that. Look at it. Too Faced are one of those brands that just release crap all the time, like the Natural Lust one. They just churn out the same shades, the same shades, the same shades, and this is the first like Christmas release from them that I've ever actually bought with my own money and been like, I am so excited for this. And I'm not gonna declutter this for my collection anytime soon. Like I'm probably gonna keep this because I really love it, but I am upset it's limited edition. And I would actually say, if you wanted it, you can now get it or you will be soon be able to get it on Debenhams because yeah, they're re-releasing it apparently. This next one is tough for me. It's quite tough. This is, is this the first one I've owned? See, apart from Urban Decay Naked Basics, this one up here, which I gave to my friend, this was the first Urban Decay Naked palette that I ever bought and I was so excited because if you know me, you know I like, like Modern Renaissance, I love Colour Dream Queen of Hearts, I love purples and pinks and all things in between. So the Urban Decay Naked Cherry, when this came out, I was like, yes, I have to get that. And this was so expensive, like it's not the most expensive palette I've ever bought, but it was so expensive. I think I've used this once since I bought it. This is probably going to go in my makeup I bought and forgot video. The first one, well the second one, part two. Because um, I could do many parts of that video. But yeah, I just never reach for this palette. Nothing to do with the quality. The quality is fab. But... Yes, it's a bit boring. It's just me. I need to only buy palettes that are super colourful and exciting or have really cool textures in them because this just sits unused. Very, very rarely I will dip into it if I need like a pale kind of peach transition. But that is so rare. I could count it on one hand. And when have you seen me use this on my, on my channel since I bought it? Ever? I don't think I've ever reached for it apart from the first time I tested it on camera. Did I even test it on camera or did I just play with it once? This is just one of those palettes that I have bought, used once and therefore regret buying. Let me very briefly show you a pile that would also apply in this bracket. So I've just picked these five as an example. I do have more examples. So the first one is the Morphe 35V, which I bought for the blue shades in it. I did do a tutorial on this and I did enjoy the quality. I don't think it's quite as nice as the 35M, but it is a nice quality palette. Have I reached for it since that first video? No, I have not. 
Then I have the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne. I've never even done a video on this. I just used this once, put a picture up on Instagram, and have never used it again. I will say that is probably because it's the least cohesive palette in the entire world. It's got two matches. One is black and one is burnt orange. But these are some of the best quality metallics I have ever come across in my entire life. Like the colours are sick and they are so pigmented and so beautiful. The next two are sister palettes and it is the Nabla Soul Blooming and the Nabla Poison Garden. Did I do a tutorial on this? I can't remember. I definitely used it once. If I have done a tutorial on it of all of these and any of these, they'll be linked down below. This is the Nabla Secret Garden, Poison Garden. Um, used it once, pretty sure. Never used it again. And yeah, Soul Blooming, used it once, maybe twice. Have never reached for it since. These palettes are just sitting in my drawer gathering dust. And then the Rachel Leary Ultimate Goddess. I bought this to do a review for my channel, which to be fair, I, I don't mind doing that, but I've never reached for it since. So maybe the world is telling me and I'm telling myself that if I do reach for one thing once, I should maybe just get rid of it afterwards because, you know what I mean? Well, so yeah, sitting in front of me is 12 palettes that I've bought, used once or twice, and then never used again. And I think that is a real shame, because a lot of these palettes are good palettes, a lot of these palettes are expensive palettes, and a lot of these palettes somebody else would really love and enjoy, but instead they just sit in my drawer gathering dust. So maybe you will see some of these palettes in upcoming What I Bought and Forgot videos, but on the whole, I really regret buying these palettes because I just never reach for them. They don't bring me joy. And to be honest, there's a part of me that just likes having them in my collection for the sake of having them in my collection. And that is a terrible reason to have makeup. But anyway, that is, that is the end of it for me today. I could do this with a lot of categories, let me tell you that. But I am gonna stop jibber jabbering on. I'm gonna go have a bath and watch Love Island because it's, it's almost Love Island time and that is my favourite time of every evening. So please let me know down in the comments below if you have any of these palettes or what palettes you have bought and regretted buying, um, especially if they're high end because that just kind of hurts that little pinch more knowing that you've spent like almost 50 pounds or even over 50 pounds on a palette and you've used it once. So I hope this video was in some way interesting to you. Um, I certainly find it eye-opening going through my drawers and looking and seeing what I never ever ever use and it kind of makes me feel a bit sick. I would hate to add up how much my collection costs of makeup that I don't use. I would estimate it to be a lot of money. But anyway, that is all for me tonight. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a big thumbs up because it really, really helps me out. Also leave me a comment down below because I do reply to all of my comments and subscribe because it is the polite thing to do. You know, <laughs> just do it. A big thank you as well to all of my Patreons. Thank you so much for supporting me in a financial manner when we hit 50, like I said. We'll do a Patreon only giveaway and our Patreon only videos once per month will begin. So I am looking forward to that because it will be completely whatever you want to see. And I think that's it. I think that's it. That's all you're doing in outro, isn't it? You say bye. So I'm going to go. Bye.